Hello, welcome to this tutorial video on Media Switcher. So this is just going to describe how we route video throughout the building here at Creekside Church. Just a little background first off, just so you know that every computer that we use to display anything on any screen in the building has a Just Add Power transmitter attached to it. So it goes HDMI from the computer or the source to the transmitter, which then sends it via Cat5 cabling through the conduit into our media hub. Where there's a big switch in here. Then from the media hub, it goes back out via Cat5 cabling to all the screens and projectors in the building where there's a Just Add Power receiver that converts it back to HDMI and sends it to the screen or projector. So if you open up Media Switcher here, this is where we control where everything happens, what goes where. So when you turn on the Mac Mini in the Media Hub for Media Switcher, usually these two screens will pop up. You have your main screen here, and this is your preset window. These should generally just be left on. If by chance one of them is off, you can turn them back on quite easily. We'll get to how to open up the preset window in a second. If by chance the entire program is off, I'll shut it off right now, and the screen is blank, just go down here to the dock at the bottom, and you'll see Media Switcher right there. You can see it on the screen. And click on that, it'll take it a second, but it will load. And once it loads, it'll come back up to that main screen there. To get that preset window open, go up to where it says window and preset window, and that'll bring it up. And then you can click it and drag it to wherever you want it to put it. So you'll see on the main display right here, what you have is you have a whole bunch of what they look like TVs or monitors on here. What that actually is, is it's every TV or projector in the building that we use to display stuff on. So you see everyone is labeled. So West Odd left, that's the left screen at the front of the West Odd. The right screen, the center screen. Video switcher is the video switcher that's right here in the media hub. So that's any, any um, stuff that we have coming in here, which normally we just leave that set to uh, receive the same pro presenter information as we're sending to the side screens in the gym. The green room does not refer to the gym green room. This is actually the green room off the west odd. The west foyer screen, so that's the TV just as you come in the west odd doors. Gym left, gym right, gym center. Gym stage TV, that's the stage TV that Ken uses. Atrium TVs are the three TVs out in the atrium. The two and three year old room, the mother's room, the grade five and six room, the grade three, four room, the grade one, two room, the JK Eske room. Playground TV are all over in the kids' wing, as is the volunteer room, the kids' check-in, and the east foyer. So that's all what all the screens are. Now, underneath each screen, it lists what is showing on that screen right now. So if I go and click on the screen here, you'll see all the possible sources that I have for any of the screens here. So we'll start out with Media Hub Program. Media Hub Program is the video switcher in the Media Hub. Media Hub Aux actually currently doesn't do anything. Pro Video Server is uh, what we use for sending the signal um, from Pro Video Server on the other Mac Mini in the Media Hub that is delayed a little bit for the West Odd to receive the message a few minutes later. West Odd Program is what we use for, is the main iMac in the West Odd. West Odd Auxiliary is actually the stage display for the West Odd, which we actually don't have switching ability with that anymore. We've changed that. It's still on the list here, but you can't actually send that anywhere. Digital signage. There's a Mac tower off in the corner over in the rack by where the switch is and all the cabling is. Um, that's the digital signage computer. Gym program is the iMac in the gym. Gym aux, just like West Odd aux, we, uh, we actually don't do anything with that one. The two and three year old room, the grade five, six room, the grade three, four room, the grade one, two room, and the JK Eske room are exactly that over in the kids wing. They each have computers in them. And this is how you can send that computer to any screen there. So if you just click on it here, if I want in West Odd left, I can put whatever these sources I want on there. So if I want digital signage there, I just click on digital signage and you'll see that that's what shows up underneath the screen for the West Odd left. And that's what would show up if we had that projector on right now. So on Sunday morning, as I said, we generally just use presets. So I'll go and press the Sunday service preset, and that will show up there everything that I want to show on the proper screens, as I've already programmed these presets in. 
Let's say we just want to switch one source at some point though. We don't need a preset necessarily for that. We can just go, like I said before, click on that screen and click on the source. That source is now going to that screen. If we don't like what we did and we want to go back to our preset, just click our preset again. And you'll see how that West Odd Write changed right back to West Odd Program. You'll also notice that in the preset drop down here, you can also grab your presets from right up there. I find it's generally easier just to have this preset window open and just be able to click on whatever I need at that point in time. Let's set our own preset right now. If we want to set a new preset. So first off, make sure that this main window is selected and then go up to window and go to preset editor. Now right here it asks for the preset name. Now if you want to edit another preset, you can just go down there and select it. So I can select Sunday service if I want and I could go in here and I could edit it. As you'll see here, you'll see this is where I've programmed everything to be for the Sunday service preset, all these things here. You'll notice that a couple of the screens here though have nothing selected. It doesn't mean that that screen goes blank when we hit this preset. What that means is whatever is already on that screen is just not, a, not affected by this preset. So if you notice, there's a kind of a pattern here. All the kids' rooms, that they have projectors in there, and they're doing stuff in their Sunday morning. We don't want to affect what they do with our switching of presets here. So they are blank, actually, in all of the presets that we use for Sunday morning. They're blank because we want them to just have the feed that they have and not be affected by anything that we do. I can also go into like the gym message preset. You know, there's, there's a lot of blank ones. They don't need to be switched, so that's why we don't change those ones because they don't need to be affected by that preset. So if we wanted to go in now and set a new preset, let's just call a new preset. We could go in here. What I'd rather do right now is actually shut down the window and go back into the preset window so it starts off fresh for us. And then I'd come in here and now you'll see that everything is blank. Everything's blank for us. Let's start a new preset called test. And now we can go down and if you want a screen to change for this preset, we can go in it. So if we want the volunteer room to have gym program, and I'm just gonna select some random sources here, but we can go around and say, I want this on this screen and whatever we want on this screen. Obviously you'd wanna have this planned out a little bit beforehand and that's normally what I do, but you come in here and say, okay, let's program this. So those are the screens we want affected by this test preset. So now we can go and we can hit save preset, right? No. First, we have to activate it. So activate that preset and then save it. If you don't remember to activate it, the, it will not save properly. So I've learned that. Just remember to go in, press activate, then press save preset. Now, if we get another preset editor window, you'll see that there's still not another preset. There should be another preset called test here. We actually have to shut the window down and reopen it. And then you'll see there's a new preset in there called test. And if I press on it, it'll change all my sources to whatever I had selected before. Luckily, I can go back to Sunday service and it'll still be go back to the proper sources there. There are a couple of things to know about this. First off, Sunday morning, your best bet when you come in on Sunday morning is to come in and press two presets right off the bat. Kids room and Sunday service. For some reason with this program, occasionally it'll change things during the week on us. I don't know why, I don't know how, little bugs in the system, but one way to make sure that we reset that is we go into kids rooms, press kids room to make sure that all the kids rooms are getting the proper signal to their rooms, and then just press Sunday service to make sure that we're all set for Sunday morning. Now what if you're not getting a display on something? You're, something's not working right, one of the screens isn't getting the right thing, it is possible sometimes that one of the receivers or transmitters just needs to be rebooted. Now you can go up to it and just unplug it and plug it back in, but lots of these receivers or transmitters you can't get to because they're by a projector or something like that. So let's say we're in the gym and the gym right screen either looks wrong um, or it's just not getting a signal properly. One of the first, uh, the first things I'll do will be to reboot that receiver or that transmitter. So if you right click here, you'll see a whole bunch of options show up. So we can reboot the receiver or we can reboot the transmitter. So I'm going to go in and press reboot receiver. Reboot receiver means that the receiver that is on that projector is now going to restart itself. So you won't see a signal for a few minutes, but you see how it's red right there? Once it comes back to green, we know that it's back. It's working, oper working normally again. If it's still not working, there's another issue. But I find that many times just rebooting the transmitter and the receiver fixes my problem. So now you can see that the dot is green. Everything's all good to go. Now, if I'm still not getting a signal, I can try rebooting the transmitter. Now, 
this is a screen that I'm clicking on right here. So it has a receiver by it. So what transmitter is rebooting? Well, it'll reboot the transmitter that's connected to it. So if I right click on it, it's connected to Jim program, which is the Jim iMac. So if I click reboot transmitter right now, what that means is any signal that's getting the Jim program will lose it. So you see Jim program over on this screen right here, Jim left right there. That's also going to lose it while that transmitter is rebooting. So actually operating media switcher is very simple. Sunday morning, as I said, you just push on the preset and it goes to the inputs that you need it to be on. If you need to know what's in a certain input, you can either just go to the, you can either just go over to the preset editor and you can see, or you can just click on it. If you're live in service, I would recommend not just clicking on a preset just to see what's in it, but you can go into the preset editor, find that preset and see, okay, this is what's going where. So every week before Sunday morning, I have a look at our service and see what needs to be done. For 90% of our services, we can use just the Sunday service, the West Side message, and the gym message presets. The digital signage preset is there for CR on Friday nights and any other program that would want to use it. The Mac tower that's over by the rack where all the cables are is set up as a computer that can run ProPresenter and you can just run some digital signage off of that. So CR does that on Friday nights. Um, other programs are allowed to do that and you can just send digital signage to whatever TV you want in the building. The kids rooms preset is just set to reset all the kids rooms to the computer that's in that room. And West Side All Screens is something that I will often turn on during the middle of the week. As you can see what it does, is it just makes all the screens in the West Side show whatever is on the West, West Odd program feed, which is the iMac in the West Side. So some programs like to use the center screen, some don't. So I just click West Side All Screens, and it means that all the screens in there, whether I use the center screen or the side screens, are going to show the feed from the iMac. The gym message is what we use during the message. And then West Side Message, what it does is it changes the West Odd center screen to our pro video server and the green room to our pro video server so that the West Odd people can be, wa can be watching the delayed message on the center screen. And the band, if they're in the green room, will be watching the message in the real time as what it is being shown in the West Side. Every other screen will be on the Media Hub program. That's the output of the switcher if it's showing the TV feed that we, the camera feed that we like to show on Sunday mornings. One more thing that we also have in Media Switch is remote controls. So if we go over to any of these screens right here, we can right click and go show remote control. Now there's a remote control right here. And what you can do is you can actually control these screens with it. Now, before I go into the remote control, I want to hit Sunday service. So press Sunday service preset. We'll right click on this and show remote control. You see how there's a green and a red button right there. The green button turns on that projector. The red button turns off the projector. So every morning, I like to come in and make sure that all the screens are on. Some of them you can't, can't operate via the remote control. A few of those include the East, uh, the Atrium TVs. You can't control those with the remote control. They have to be actually turned on manually with a remote control. <laughs> And I think, and there's one or two other TVs that you'll go through. But your best bet when you come in is to check which ones are on and which ones are off. Most people turn on their own screens. It is nice to be able to turn them on for people though. The big thing is turning them off at the end of the day. I've found that many people do not turn off the screens here. And so it's a good job for the video person to come in here and turn off every screen. So a little tedious, but start at West Odd Left when you're on the Sunday service preset and come in here and just click the off button. So come down here, click off. That'll shut that screen off. Come to your next input. West odd right, off. West odd center, and just keep going down the list, turning things off. Now you'll get to some, like the Atrium TVs, that won't have a button. If they don't have a button, then that's not your issue. You don't have to worry about that one. Go to our mother's room, we'll turn that one off. And as you said, we just keep going down the whole list of every input. As you can see, the Playground TV also does not have an off button. That's because we can't control that one with a remote, with this remote. Go and turn them all off. Once we've turned them all off, we're good to go. A great thing about this computer, we don't need to shut it down. We don't need to do anything with it. When we're done, as you know, we just turn off the power switch on the rack right here, and everything shuts off, no problem. 
So that's Media Switch in a pretty quick nutshell right there. How to make some edits in there, change some presets, and just change a screen, and also how to turn the screens on and off. Thanks for listening.